Hello, everybody. Good morning. It's Monday. It's 10 o'clock. And it's Andy here. Hope you're doing okay this morning. Hope you've had a good weekend. Just waiting for people to click on. Hi, Scott. Hi, Joan. Morning, Janine. Hi, Rosie. I'm coming to you from a slightly different background today, so I'm uh, in my other office. <laughs> so I'm also on 4G this morning uh, as the Wi Fi is playing up. So if the feed goes funny at any point, then I apologise in advance. Morning, Charles and Frida. So just a reminder, while people are getting tuned in and settled in, that uh, this week and next week Luke and Leah are on holiday. So they're having a break for a few weeks. So you'll have myself and Terence as usual, plus a few guest devotioners. So there's going to be some new faces in the mornings doing the devotions, which will make it, I'm sure, a lot more exciting. I'm sure by now you're sick of us. So it's, uh, it'll be nice to have some fresh fresh insight, but we're still going to be journeying through Proverbs. So uh, we'll still be sticking with the same theme, but different people will be sharing different content, things like that. And uh, also a reminder that in the evenings, uh, there's nothing happening at all uh, due to the summer period. We've kind of stopped the, the Tuesday night stuff and the Thursday night stuff just while people are in and out of work and uh, and uh, making sure that that people have just got a chance to have a little bit of a breather as well make the most of of your holidays if you are having holidays or just trying to take it a bit easier so if we were normally open we'd, we'd normally close a lot of our programs down anyway in the summer uh, but but we're not so we'll still keep the devotions up but there's nothing in the evenings and of course this thursday we'll have another testimony for you and of course on sunday we'll have our usual services for you as well so i think that's all the news i've got to share so far morning everybody else who's joined in the last few minutes matt and sarah matt crew uh, mavis rachel it's great to see you all on here once again so uh, we're going to look at proverbs 5 together this morning if you've got a bible to hand or if you just want to listen in that's absolutely fine uh, it's an interesting chapter this morning uh, last week we we started proverbs and we looked at obviously the value of wisdom every day it was really about wisdom and the importance of wisdom and what we can learn from that and uh, but today it's more of a kind of a caution or a warning as such that we're going to look at so um, we're going to actually be speaking about the, the wonderfully inspirational topic of adultery so I'm sure that's I seem to drop on these topics regularly that are just awful to teach about I don't know what it is I think it's just you know probably the, the Lord has a sense of humor but uh, today it's it's all about adultery but uh, you know Proverbs is a practical book you know and I think that's one of the great things about scripture scripture is is that it is accessible for us it is useful it's insightful for this day and age so uh, there's kind of three things we're going to look at this morning as we move through the proverb together and uh, and, and and we'll kind of draw that out and hopefully you'll get something out of it that you can at least think about or, or cause you to to, uh, to reflect on I mean as Timothy says all scripture is good right it's all God breathed it's all useful in some way so let's this morning even more than normal, let's lean in and believe that God has things we can all learn from or reflect upon this morning as we share together. So why don't we start? We're going to start with Proverbs, uh, as I say, chapter 5. We're going to start looking at verses 3 through 7. So I'm going to read these for you now. So the lips... The lips of a seductive woman, I should say I'm, I'm leading from, reading from the message as well. So the lips of a seductive woman are oh so sweet as soft words are so smooth, but it won't be long before she's graveling your mouth, a pain in your gut, a wound in your heart. She's dancing down the primrose path to death. She's headed straight for hell and taking you with her. She hasn't a clue about real life, about who she is or where she's going. So my friend, listen closely. Don't treat my words casually. Keep your distance from such a woman. Absolutely stay out of her neighborhood. That's very strong, isn't it? Uh, I like the way the message puts that. But uh, the first thing this morning that this proverb is telling us is adultery is bad. As if we needed to be told, but just in case you don't know, adultery is bad bad you know I, I looked up this morning some stats actually on adultery in the UK and, and believe it or not there was a survey done in 2015 
and it said that one in five married people are having an affair. One in five people in the UK, one in five married people in the UK right now could possibly be having an affair. That was 2015. That was YouGov who did the survey. So who knows? It might have changed slightly since then, but that was the stats just a few years ago. And apparently of those one in five people, you know, uh, so what, 60 million people in the UK? I don't know how many people are married, but let's take an, a conservative estimate and say that, you know, 10, 50, like 50% 50 is 30 million, 10% is 6 million, let's say 5% of them maybe are married. Um, then, you know, we've, we're talking millions of people right now, between 3 and 5% of them only will turn into marriage. And infidelity is still the top reason cited for divorce. So basically, there's a whole bunch of people who think that they're onto something better than what they've got, but they end up with nothing. That's what's happening right now in our society, in our country. There's people who are in committed relationships, who are looking elsewhere for fulfillment in one way or another, and they think it's gonna work out well. They think the grass is greener, but in fact, actually, it tends to lead nowhere. And instead, it'll destroy their families, it'll destroy their relationships. And as we all know, very few people recover from that. And the scripture's pretty clear that, you know, adultery is, is bad, having an affair, it's bad, you know, making, a, you know, any kind of, breaking a promise or a vow it's frowned upon and going right back to the Ten Commandments adultery is one of the things that God was really clear about don't do it and you know often we think about scripture as, as some kind of archaic manual for life but actually when you look at the practical wisdom that we've got here in Proverbs 5 you see just the value of, of living God's way of him saying right from the get-go this is bad for you this isn't going to help you. Don't do this. And that's the first thing this proverb is cautious against is, is saying, look, you know, here's some practical wisdom for you. Don't live your life in this way. So the second thing then in the proverb is that marriage, on the other hand, is good. So as we move on into Proverbs 5, uh, 18 to 19, the scripture says this. It says, it says, enjoy the wife you married as a young man, lovely as an angel, beautiful as a rose. Don't ever quit taking delight in her. Never take her love for granted. That's Proverbs 5, 18 to 19 in the message. Marriage is good. So adultery is bad, but marriage is good. The truth is, as we all know, God made us for relationship. He made us for connection. And marriage is the most intimate form or the most intimate extension of that relationship. Now, you know, I appreciate some people watching this may think, well, actually, I've had bad experiences of marriage. And I'm really sorry if that's your, if that's your experience. I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to make light of that. I understand that sometimes things go wrong. I work in a setting with people who have experienced domestic abuse, which is, of course, horrendous. So we're not in any way promoting people stay involved in bad marriages or marriages that are harmful. But marriage is meant to be good. It's meant to be enjoyed forever. The type of God marriage that God designed is meant to be one that is the ultimate kind of partnership you know my wife and I and I'm really glad that she's put on this post right now that, that, she's, that she likes being married to me we, in a few weeks we celebrate our 15 year wedding anniversary we got married when we were 23 you know um and um, it, it feels like, you know, a long time ago in one sense, because a lot of stuff has happened since then. But in other ways, we still very much, I'd like to think so, love being married to each other. We love the adventures that we've been able to go on. That's not to say we haven't had our challenges. Look at that. She's correcting me right now. 22. We were 22. Sorry, everybody. I need to get my facts right. Um, you know, marriage can be challenging at times. But it is a good thing. It was designed by God to be the place, uh, you know, where people celebrate one another and work together for the good of God's kingdom. And, you know, ultimately journey together in God to achieve the things that he has planned for them. You know, in Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12, the Bible says this. It says it's better to have a partner than to go it alone. Share the work, share the wealth. If one falls down, the other one helps. But if there's no one to help, that's tough. Two in a bed, they warm each other. Alone, you shiver all night, but yourself, you're by yourself, you're unprotected. With a friend, you can face the worst. Can you round up a third? A three-stranded rope isn't easily snapped. I love that. You know, outside of our relationships with God, marriage is about the ultimate partnership. It's not meant to be about arguing or fighting or a power struggle. It's meant to be an expression of the intimate love of God. And if you're married today, if you're in a committed relationship, then why not thank God today? 
for your spouse. Often, you know, marriage gets a bad rap. Often we think about and we'll, even with our colleagues, we'll talk about, oh, this is what happened last night or they're always on at me or whatever. But actually, being married, it's a gift and we should celebrate it and we should thank God for our partners, for our spouses. So if you are today, if you are married, if you're in a committed relationship, why don't you take that time to thank God for that special person in your life? And if you're single, don't despair. You know, as the Apostle Paul reminds us, singleness itself can also be a gift because you can give yourself fully to what if God has, to whatever God has for you. So if you're single and you're watching this, please don't be dismayed. I'm not going to bang on about how good marriage is forever. I'm just going through the proverb right there and uh, you know and if you're looking for someone then you know choose well someone once said outside of you know the, your relationship with God the person who you marry is, is probably the second most important decision you'll make in your life other than becoming a Christian because they have such a big bearing on your life and on your um, you know on your on your destiny you get the wrong person in your life it can absolutely cripple your future so it's important to choose well so let's finish this proverb up then with the final part of the passage which is about how there is wisdom in discipline. Proverbs 5, 21 to 23, it says this, mark well that God doesn't miss a move you make. He's aware of every step you take. The shadow of your sin will overtake you. You'll find yourself stumbling all over the dark. Death is the reward of an undisciplined life. You f your foolish decisions will trap you in a dead end. In uh, you know Proverbs five, if, uh, five, that's Proverbs five twenty one to twenty three, and uh, it reminds us you know God is watching. People watch your life, but God watches our life. Not to condemn us, right? But because He cares for us. And sometimes I think you know we, we read that God is watching us, and we think oh God is watching us like Big Brother. I think sometimes God watches us like this. <sighs> What are you doing that for? You know, it, oh, come on, you can do it. I think God watches us in the same way as a father I would watch my kids. He's sparing us on. He wants us to make good choices. He, he cares about us. He loves us. He isn't angry at us because his grace means that he loves us so much. But at the same time, he despairs when we make those bad choices and we end up in a position or a path that we don't want to go down. You know, some years ago, friends of mine who were schools workers, they uh, they delivered an assembly all about boundaries and all about how boundaries are a good thing. And they actually, and I'm not advocating this, but they took a goldfish in to this uh, school and this goldfish was in a bowl and uh, they took the goldfish out of the bowl just for a few seconds. And the kids in the school were screaming, put it back in, put it back in. And they were trying to make the point, you know, well, look, it's happy. It's not in any, it's not restricted anymore. It's got no boundaries. It's free. It can do what it wants outside of the bowl. And eventually, of course they put they put the fish back in uh, but they were illustrating the point that sometimes you know we think that you know that, that boundaries are a bad thing sometimes we we feel that restrictions are unhelpful and they suffocate us and you know we should just be free to do whatever we want but actually if we go down that route then occasionally without those restrictions we end up in a situation where actually our life is is at greater risk and i think this proverb is all about that you know sometimes freedom sometimes doing what you want living for pleasure it can seem like a really good thing but actually it can be very very dangerous and we need boundaries we need discipline and if we don't have them we end up in all kinds of trouble so you know as a closing thought are there any boundaries you need in your life do you need some accountability in your life today if so then you know reach out to us if you've got no one else and we'll see what we can do to help you you know uh, drop us an email sheffield christian life center you know dot co dot uk we'd love to hear from you we are here to help you you know our, our mission statements as we always gone about we we're all about you know creating family meeting needs and making disciples and all of this stuff you know is about figuring out what it means to be a follower of jesus and proverbs is a great book that helps us to navigate some of these practical things gives us practical insight into all of that so if we can help reach out to us we'd love to help you on your journey or maybe there's someone in your life already you know you can pick up the phone to and they can give you that support that you need i think that's just about everything i've got to share with you this morning i hope you've you've enjoyed thinking about adultery with me this morning or not thinking about adultery, thinking about definitely not doing adultery. I really hope um, you've found something in the midst of that, that that helps you or makes you think about, even if it's just being grateful for your spouse. You know, the Bible is is a great book and it's full of all kinds of different books. And Proverbs is one of those books, like I say, that's really practical. And uh, these are things that, that even if they're not, maybe, um, you know, maybe they can't apply to us today. We can apply them to our friends or our colleagues who are going through stuff. We can speak into their lives. We can share this wisdom with them so uh, let me pray for you as we finish now and then we'll we'll close 
Uh, Father, thank you for everybody watching this this morning. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your faithfulness. And thank you that you give us this practical wisdom, Lord, that we can draw on every situation we face in our lives. I pray for everybody watching this today. Help us to reflect on the things we've talked about and to put them into practice where we need to. Help us today in whatever we're doing. Keep us all safe. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. Thanks for sticking with me today. Have a fantastic day. See you guys soon. Have a great week. Bye-bye for now.